Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your weekly NEOTA wrap. Well, we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, trying to ask ourselves what happened last week. What does it tell us about the coming ones? I do this show every Sunday evening, broadcast after before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube. It's under the channel L.A. Little. If you haven't subscribed, up the right-hand side, you can subscribe. Free and easy. Keeps you up to date with what's going on. And with what's going on, you probably want to stay up to date. Last week, huge losses across these indexes. Anywhere from 8% to 6%, depending on which index you were in. It was around the world. It was heavy. It was hard. And it just kept coming. Let's take a look at the charts. Moving over to the S&P 500 to start with, you can see the downdraft. The downdraft was, uh, you know, over the last two weeks has been straight down. I mean, we've had a, a percentage move to the downside uh, that probably rivals any of the ones we've seen. And we have seen some big ones over the last year and a half, and they continue. They haven't stopped, and it doesn't look like they're going to stop. And what I mean by that is if you look at this closely, what you have is you have a break of a swing point here, another break of a swing point there, also a break of a swing point here. So you had three swing point breaks as you came down. Not only did you have it on the daily time frame, you had it on the weekly as well. If we clean this one up and look at it, you had a swing point break here. That swing point also leads to a faster move because you have it on multiple time frames and right now we're in the midst of that this is the bar where is it going it's targeting that low that high volume low from this past august if you move across to any of the indexes whether we're looking here or whether we look at the nasdaq there are some slight differences but for the most part it's the same story you have breaks of swing point lows on the way back down. And as they break them, right, you get an escalation to the downside. NASDAQ on a weekly basis, same thing. Swing point low here breaks that. That also leads to that escalation type move, just like we saw in the S&P 500. And as you can see, that escalation is in process. And that swing point low down here is the target. It's that way on each of the indexes, and the one that probably stands out more than most is the Russell 2000. So if we take a look at it, the Russell showing the extent of the move, and on the surface, though it looks the same, the Russell on a weekly basis breaks out the swing point low already from August, and if you move to the monthly, the Russell is coming up on a swing point low on the monthly. Remember, in neoclassical thought, Long-term time frames do not break very often. When they do, they're significant. This particular one, if and when it breaks, will be significant. That's something you have to keep your eye on. Moving back over to the daily chart here on the Russell, you can actually see an ABCD structure to the downside uh, that has completed now. So now the question is, are they going to get a bounce out of this thing as a result, or is it going to be a continuation and they just drive it lower and lower. All measures point to oversold. In other words, we're already stretched in terms of time, in terms of price. And typically, you get some sort of a bounce out of that. You can see this first move down, got the bounce test, and a bounce again. I would expect you're going to see something like that take place again here on the Russell and happen fairly soon. If we move overseas, Hong Kong. Breaks the swing point low, right? Escalates to the downside. Huge volume on that escalation. Hong Kong has already gotten underneath these August lows, pressing towards the September lows now and trying to break them and break them uh, with volume. Moving over to uh, Shanghai. Looking at Shanghai, we've got uh, big losses to start the year. Shanghai coming after those lows from August. It really doesn't matter where you look. There are lows and there are losses that are accumulated at this point to where many of the markets around the world are basically in bear markets at this point in time. U.S., no. Europe, no. Most other markets, yes, they're already there. 
and we're starting to see that deterioration come forth and hit these U.S. markets. Speaking of the deterioration, if you pull up the current market trends and you take a look at those, you know what you're going to see at this point is everything on the short and the intermediate term time frame, or should I say almost everything, has turned bearish. You see it in each of these cases, each and every one of these bearish. They all turned bearish this week on the short term. They're already there on the intermediate term. They never did lift or just a couple of them did. And what does that mean? Well, you go from short term to intermediate to long term. You go from stocks down here to sectors to general market. And so what this is trying to do, and it's getting close to doing, is actually starting to affect these markets. We've got bearish in that case. We've got it on the uh, basic materials and the energy sectors. And we actually have the potential now, and we're close, to getting breakdowns here on the industrial and also potentially on the financials. And if that happens, folks, that's going to tell you that the sectors are starting to break down and the next place you're going to see it is here on those long-term indexes. So, in summary, risk rising, more and more concern. You know, last week we should have seen a bump up Alpha Europe. It failed. I brought, you know, I came in the next day, I believe it was Thursday. It was Wednesday we should have seen it. Third, I mean, Wednesday we saw the setup. Thursday it was supposed to happen. Didn't. That was an indication that things were worse than we thought. Friday we got follow through. I wouldn't be surprised to see some more follow through and flush out this week. You got earnings season starting up this week. If there ever was a case for this market to buy the news, so to speak, it would be on the earnings not much expected, and you have a huge sell-off into those earnings. That will be the next test. That's the setup coming into this week, and that's what you got to have your eyes peeled on because if the market can't lift on earnings as a result of everything that's happened already, then it's just telling us that things are even worse than we expect, and we already know it's bad, and that the lift isn't coming anytime soon. Another thing that we should realize is when you have this much damage, it doesn't just go away. If, you're, if you go back and review the comments that I made way back in August, September of this last year, that was is that we were going to see a death by a thousand cuts. We were going to see this market try to lift and eventually fall back down, and then that was when we were going to find out if we really have distribution and a top in place. We're at that point. The decision is going to be made fairly soon, and we will find out. That's your weekly wrap. We're going to have another uh, volatile week. So put your um, boots on and strap on your helmet because it's going to be a tough ride. I'll see you uh, tomorrow, and we'll pick it up there. Take care. Good night.